Good day and welcome to... Oops, that's not me. I've been waiting for this package to arrive for a long time. I really don't know why I shipped it. I mean, it's just a small package. I could have put it in my carry-on bag, but... Oh well. Today we're going to talk about natural black Ethiopian opal. Wait a minute. Something important just came up. Generally, I hate all packing materials, but some are worse than others. So, I decided that this was the time for me to make my first top 10 list. I've been seeing these for years and never had the chance to make one of my own. But I didn't have 10 things, but so here are the top 8 worst types of packing material. Coming in at number 8 of the worst list is actually the best, bubble wrap. It it offers good padding, it's easy to use, and most importantly, at number seven we have air pillows. How they inflate these, I don't really know, but I do know how to deflate them. At number six we have paper, a time-honored method of packing things. For companies, they use blank sheets, but for most of us, it's good old newspaper. At number five we have an old-fashioned packing material called Excelsior. No, this has nothing to do with spreadsheets. All it is is just shredded wood. It worked back in the day, so I'm told. At number four, we have recyclable foam peanuts. They're only number four because they are recyclable. I have received at least one package that used popcorn as the packing material. So the question comes up is, can you eat it? Well, we know rats love it, and if you eat it, I hope you like rat droppings. I have to confess, I tried it, and I think it needed salt and a little butter. And number two, we have shredder paper. This stuff is used when somebody has no packing material, but does have a shredder. This is what gives rise to the second most dreaded packing material, shredder paper. Tragically messy, but if you paste them all together, sometimes you can retrieve a social security number. I'm just saying. The hands down scourge of packaging. Foam peanuts are not only the worst on this list, they're also in the top 10 of the worst things of all time. You never, ever want to receive these things in a package that you have to open. They create a catastrophic mess both for you and the environment. But they're nimble little puffs that get everywhere and are nearly impossible to clean up. Light and statically charged. When you grab for them, they may either jump away or attack you like a fat, fluffy leech. Okay, I finally got some black, natural black Ethiopian opal at the Tucson Gem Show. This opal was discovered in 2013, not too far from the original opal mine at Wagaltina, found at the town of Gashina, only 50 miles away. By the way, this new mine is called the Stayish Mine. I'm not really sure why. I guess you can just stayish or you can goish. After they found the opal, I guess they just stayed. The elevation here is about 3,000 feet, and you can see the opal layer is confined to one single layer. They have never found opal in any other layer. That's both at Willow and otherwise. Previously, black Ethiopian opal was all smoked. So I was at the show and I asked one of the dealers if he could show me some smoked Ethiopian opal and he was gracious enough to do it. And he asked me, do you smoke them? And I said, well, only in states where it's legal. And I think you can see that these smoked opals really look good. It's sad that they're smoked, but what the heck. Let's look at this Ethiopian black, natural black opal. It comes shaped in rounded nodules with matrix on the outside. The only difference that you see is that the opal itself is black, unlike the wellow opal where it's lighter color usually. The color can be very good. This is red and green. It's nice on this side, but if you turn it around, we can see this dark gray area of black potch which extends into it. Sometimes this can be very frustrating when cutting these stones. So to get the best possible sample, I took all 11 stones and worked for about seven hours grinding off all this crud and getting them down so that only the opal was showing at the surface. It was quite a job. I wish that someone else had done it. Maybe Sheila, my assistant. She is my assistant, right? 
Well, well, well. After many hours of working, truly many hours of working, it's come to this. These, we'll call this group A, are, oh, these are ones that I've taken to polish and they're acceptable as far as color goes. This, basically, is just junk. No color or broken or very little color or completely. They look pretty good polished, but on closer inspection, there was something wrong with them. Cracks. Cracks everywhere. So, I took out the Opticon and here they are, the finished product. I have a black opal and I need to mark it, but it's black and my marker's black. Well, I have one that's blue, but I'll never see it. What do I do? Well, folks, what you do is get a hold of a Sharpie peel-off black opal marker. These were made specifically for me, but you can also occasionally find these. They come in large, extra large, small, and extra small. They have white material that rubs off on the black surface and it will cure you of your black opal ills. You can take that to the bank because that's all we use here at Pulitzer Opal. Sharpie, peel off, black opal marker. Okay, I've marked areas that I'm going to cut on five of these stones. Now, I don't really know what the result's going to be, but, I mean, I'm, I'm not an opal whisperer or anything, you know. I'm just a human being. So, I'm going to cut along these lines and see if we can liberate some color. Otherwise, to me, these are pretty much worthless. Unless we can get a stone out of them. Wish me luck. So we have the final results, four stones to look at. This one, pretty nice color, big crack. This one, only can see it at an angle, but it looks good. It's, this one's sort of got a pinfire pattern. It's pretty decent looking. And this one has a very sparse pinfire pattern. Now I wanted to talk about this before you all start posting things in the comments. I'm very much aware that my hands are bad. I do have excuses. I have a medical condition called skinus dryus, also called xerosis, but we won't get technical here. And it is winter. Air is dry in winter, particularly inside. So I tried setting up my equipment outside, but my tongue got stuck to the metal grinding wheels. Also, getting your hands wet removes important oils. That will dry out your skin really quickly. Now, anybody can get dry skin, even kids. This baby got dry skin after working for a long time on his opals. But I also have to talk about my nails. You may notice that for the first time in a video, I actually have nails. My nails have been bitten my entire life. But that stopped a month ago when I finally convinced my wife to stop biting them. As a kid, my parents bit my nails. You don't think that I would do that, do you? But they kind of look like a gravedigger's nails. So it's my promise to you that before the next video, my hands will look good, my nails will look good, I may even get a manicure. But do real men get manicures? Apparently so. My son says they do. So who knew? So what are my final thoughts on stayish opal? Well, I think that for now, you should stay away from it. It does have an advantage over Wello Opal in that it does not absorb water. Now, this is the second parcel that I've cut, and I found both to be somewhat crumbly and only of average color. It is cheaper than other Ethiopian Opal, but that might be indicative of the quality that you will get. Realize that my impression is based on a limited sample, I'm sure that there is stash opal that's a lot better. Overall, I personally would rather have smoked wellow opal than stash opal. And of course, neither can compare to good Australian black opal. Today's lapidary specimen is Malachite Chrysocolla. 
The blue areas of these beautiful stones represent Chrysocolla and the green malachite. I purchased this specimen and this specimen in Tucson. They're beautiful specimens, bright blue, lots of greens, and these rounded structures. Those are botryoidal patterns, in other words, grape-like patterns. Uh, before they were ground down smooth like this, they actually had a grape-like appearance, as in this agate. I was able to preserve the botryoidal patterns that co by covering these with glue, and you can see they're raised and grape-like. The most beautiful thing I saw in Tucson in the first few days were these incredible cross-sections of stalagmites from the Congo. Each of these had a price tag of over $30,000, and apparently... Whatever cave they pulled them from, well, it's either protected or they've taken all of it out. Well, we've reached the end again. I can't believe it's over already. As usual, hit the like button, subscribe, all those things. Ring the bell. I've considered possibly doing a second channel of shorter videos on subjects other than opal and other rocks. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. I appreciate your comments, and like I said before, I try to read all of them. So, so long until next time.